Hey there, engineers. Welcome to Civil Engineering Academy, where we're looking at another problem from reinforced concrete design. And it reads like this. Reinforced concrete beam with cross-sectional dimensions and properties shown has both compression and tension steel for flexural reinforcement. Assume that the compression steel yields what is most nearly the nominal moment capacity of the beam. Okay, well, we're given a few properties here. We've got the uh, A sub S, which is the area of our tension steel looks like they've given us five number nine bars we've got our a prime sub s which is the area of our compression steel a prime sub s and they've given us two number seven bars and then our f prime sub c which is the strength of the concrete is 4000 psi and then we've got our uh, yield strength of our on our rebar our steel which is 60,000 psi Okay, so uh, if we'll remember a couple things, if you uh, look at your FE reference handbook, um, we're going to look at a couple things. First of all, we got to figure out how much area this, these uh, uh, five number nine bars are giving us and how much two number seven bars are going to give us. And so if we look at our ASTM standard reinforcing bars, this chart that's listed in our handbook, we can come down here and see that we've got... Uh, number nine bars uh, have a area of one inch even. So we could say that our uh, five number nine bars are going to give us basically five times one, right? So that's going to give us five inches squared of steel. And then our two number seven bars, if we look down here, each number seven is worth 0.6. So if we've got two of those, we can say that this is going to give us 1.2 inches squared of steel. So we figured out our area of steel for compression and tension faces. And then this chart right here is just a reminder of what, uh, what we're analyzing here and some of the distances. So D prime is going to be the distance from the uh, compression face to the middle of the uh, the compression steel, which uh, in this case we've got a dimension of 1.5 inches. Uh, we've got our effective depth, which is D, which is the distance from the compression face of the, the beam down to the centroid of the steel. We could have several layers of steel. In this case, we've only got one, so that's the effective depth, D. In this case, our D is 22 inches. It's listed here. And let's get after this. So the first thing we need to do is ensure that or uh, decide that uh, our compression steel is actually yielding. We still need that compression steel to yield. Um, we want the tension steel to yield as well in a doubly reinforced uh, beam uh, to maintain that ductile behavior that we're trying to maintain in a beam. And so even though the problem statement says that we should assume that the compression steel yields, we're going to go through the exercise of proving that it does here, just for illustration purposes. What we do is we take uh, the difference between the compression steel and tension steel, and we make sure that the difference is greater than or equal to this fun equation here, 0.85 times beta 1 times F prime sub C times our D prime times the width of our beam, all divided by the yield strength of our steel. And let's see, and then that is all times by 87 thousand all divided by 87,000 minus F sub Y bracket that getting into my beam here a little bit but we'll bracket that and uh, we need to make sure that this uh, this equation is satisfied to determine again if the compression steel yields which is what we want so if I say uh, 5.0, which is our area of our tension steel, minus 1.2. and I won't worry about carrying the units right here for now on this inches side because we're 
We know we're going to get inches here. We know we're going to get inches here. We're going to say 0.85, uh, our beta 1. Now, uh, this is a, a value you need to look up in your FE reference manual. But if you look, uh, you'll find that uh, our beta 1 value equals 0 0.85. And 0.85 is the value for uh, concrete that has uh, 4,000 PSI compressive strength. And beta 1 is essentially uh, the ratio of depth of the rectangular stress block to the depth to the neutral axis C. That's what that uh, beta 1 represents. And so we looked that up. We know it's 0 0.85. So we can go 0 0.85 times 0 0.85 times 4,000 times 1.5 times our width, which is 14 inches, all divided by strength of our steel, 60,000. And then I ran out of room here, but uh, I'll just continue down here, and that's all going to be times by, of course, 87,000 um, divided by 87,000 minus 60,000. Okay, so if we crank through that, uh, this side of the inequality, uh, we're going to have, uh, of course, 5.0 minus a 1.2. We're going to have uh, 3.8 inches squared. And again, that's got to be greater than or equal to. And if we crank through this, uh, let's see, what should we get? We should get uh, 3.25 inches squared. And so since uh, the difference between our uh, tension and compression steel is 3.8, and that's greater than or equal to 3.25 inches squared, we've just verified that our compression steel indeed does yield. So that's a good thing. Okay, next, uh, we want to calculate the depth of concrete compression, excuse me, the depth of the concrete compressive stress block A. And so to do that, um, we need to remember that the depth of this compression stress block now for doubly reinforced steel uh, or doubly reinforced beams, it's going to be a s minus a prime sub s all times f sub y divided by 0 0.85. F prime sub C times, oops, this is a B, times the width of the beam. Um, and that is going to equal, uh, of course, 5 minus 1.2. And let's keep our units here. That's going to be inches squared times our 60,000 pounds per inches squared all divided by 0 0.85 times our 4,000 pounds per inch squared all in this uh, denominator all times the width of the beam 14 inches okay we times all that out and we should come out with 4.8 inches. Okay. And then what's left here now, uh, one little kind of nuance here in the question, it's asking for what is most nearly the nominal moment capacity. So uh, the allowable moment capacity would be a, a phi m sub n number, but um, the nominal would just be our phi, or excuse me, our m sub n. So we don't have to mess with any phi factor. Usually for flexure, our phi uh, or strength reduction factor is 0.9. In this case, they're not asking for the allowable, they're asking for the nominal. So we're just worried about finding m sub n, okay? And for a doubly reinforced 
concrete beam, our M sub N is going to equal yield strength of our steel times the difference in the area of our steels. all times D minus the depth of our stress block divided by two. And I'm gonna continue now, and this is all plus, continue over here, plus our compression steel area. times our effective depth minus the depth to our compression steel. Okay, and I need to square this bracket because F sub Y is times by all these terms. Okay, um, let's erase a little bit of this so I have some room here to complete things. Let's erase this number down here. We know that at the depth of our stress block is 4.8. So I'm gonna erase that a little bit just so we can, um, and actually I'm gonna erase a little bit more just so we've got enough room here. We know our, uh, our A is 4.8. So let's erase this. Okay. And let's say that now that we, uh, so we know this is 4.8. Let's just put that down here. And we're going to say then that our, our nominal moment strength is going to equal our 60,000 pounds per inch squared all times the difference in our steel, which uh, we've already calculated, right, to be 3.8 inches squared times our effective depth, which we know is 22 minus our 4.8 divided by two, right? That 4.8 was the depth of our compressive stress block. And all that's gonna be uh, added to the area of our compression steel, which is 1.2 inches squared. That's going to be times RD, which again was 22 minus D prime, 1.5. And we're going to bracket that. And if we grind through that, we're going to come up with a final value. And again, we're dealing in inches and pounds, right? So our final value and um, these two numbers uh, are inches. Forgot to carry the units here. And same with these two values. We got an inches unit on the outside of that. And so our, our nominal one, we're going to grind through that. We get 5,944,800 uh, inch pounds. And our uh, answer is in kip feet. So we've got to divide this by 12 inches per foot and we got to divide it by 1,000 pounds per kip okay and we do that and we're going to come up with 495.4 Kip feet, which is closest to answer B. Okay, so kind of a uh, little bit messy here. We kind of got uh, oh, we kind of got uh, stuck in the corner here as we were grinding through these equations. But uh, hopefully that helps you out, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.